Hello everyone, this is Ants Portugal once again, here today for Ant Care Species Guide episode number 5. Is it? It's 5. Wow, really? Wow. Uh, so, today, we'll be taking a look at Poly- Poirakis dives. It's a species of weaver ant, as all Poirakis are. And you can take this guide as a sort of Poirakis genus guide, although every specific bit will be for dives okay now as you know we have to t- give jeff a visit so jeff how are you doing mate uh what are you supposed to tell me today polyrakis divas there you go that's how you that's how he says it that's how everyone should say it because he's jeff the google translator guy now back to poor rakis this species of ant is very very interesting i I love this species of ant first and foremost they're not for beginners they're not supposed to be taken care by beginners but with just a little ant experience you can take care of them and they'll be just the biggest blast you've ever had all power iraq in my opinion all power iraqis ants are this way now there are a few species of Poirakis that have been recently discovering discovered, and there are, prob- there are probably a, a lot more that will be discover- discovered in the near future. But the ones you can find online are easy to understand how to take care of. What's not easy is to actually take care of them. Because they are weaver ants, and they take a few... Pr- precautions there are a few precautions you may take and a few things you must pay attention to and uh, i'll get into that uh right now actually first of all they're tropical they're found in southern asia all throughout the islands that are in between australia and asia they can be found in northern east australia and also in and also as north as china and japan now moving on they are a tropical species of ant, so they need a very hot and humid um, spaces to live in. But it, before we take into consideration the numbers for humidity and temperature, you have to pay attention to the fact that they're river ants. So now we have to talk about setup. They can they can be housed in. Um, in a outworld connected to a nest setup, they can be housed just in an outworld and given space to build their own nest. You can do whatever. What I what I would do is I'll give them a a sort of vertical outworld and the nest attached. They'll probably just move into the nest right away, and as they grow or if they prefer, they'll build the nest. What ends up happening a lot of the time with these species, I find, is that they'll utilize the nest you give them. They'll totally utilize that, but they'll modify it. They'll take stuff you leave in the outworld, uh, if you give if you give it to them, and they'll they'll build little corners. They'll build uh, smaller chambers. They'll build um, they'll 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 build whatever they want inside because they use their larvae their larvae silk to glue stuff you know normal weaver ants um the most well-known weaver ants they use they they glue leaves together and they only live inside of leaf nests but polyrachis they're able to live everywhere they usually nest actually close to 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 ground level and they they grab stuff they grab debris like moss grass uh, little sticks little pieces of dirt and they, they glue it together to create a ball nest it's usually in the form of a ball but given the circumstances and the place where they build it it can vary in shape and it can vary in color due to the to what materials you give them so um they will utilize whatever you give them you can give them the substrate a good substrate and they'll work with that if you use I don't know, sphagnum moss, if you use coconut coconut mulch or other coconut byproducts that they use in reptiles, 
or you can give them like little cups with pieces of um, roughly cut but small wood chips or with the substrate, the substrate that you would otherwise put in the art world. So you don't what you can try to to condition them to do a certain type of nest, but this is usually not the best way to go about it. If you if you can condition them, I mean, for sure do it because it's beautiful when you get a a polarizer ant to actually leave a nest on a on a fake plant or on a on a on a or on a living plant actually, and that's that's when we get into. Uh, humidity and heat because if they live in the outworld if they weave a nest in the outworld you have to get the outworld to the the conditions you want the nest to be in so first of all give them a gradient always give them a cold side um, and a heat side give them a, a humid side and a dry side one other thing that you should pay attention to is that is that if you're using live plants, use a plant that can handle these conditions of heat and humidity. Also, if you have live plants, you don't have to to, to pay much attention to humidity, just, just um, wet the soil so the plant can drink and the plant will evaporate some of the water through its pores and the air, the air will be more humid or, or as humid as that plant needs it to be and if that plant lives or can live in an environment similar to these ants the plant will regulate the humidity for the ants that's perfect right that's awesome but um just uh keep in mind that making sure that a plant lives with and thrives with your ants is very hard. So I would say if you are a semi-beginner, because if you're a beginner, don't get this species at all. If you're a semi-beginner, if you've had like two or three ants before, two or three ant species before, just give them the, the let them choose option. If you're a very seasoned hobbyist, which I don't even consider myself to be, try to condition them. If you want, because it's it's geez, it's it's so gorgeous. And if you're an experienced hobbyist, I don't know why you're watching my video my videos, but I'm I'm truly thankful. <laughs> now, um, moving on, I haven't talked about size. Neither of the ants nor in the colony. So, these ants can get to about I'd say eight to ten millimeters. I'd say they're somewhere in between they're somewhere about eight millimeters i'd say they're not one full centimeter i guess but paul Rackers ants are not small definitely they're they're big and with the attitude they have they are always very bold even if there's like one worker in the colony that worker is extremely bold and they're always they they have very good sensing abilities they they know if you are near the, their enclosure they they sense you with their antennae and they don't have that poor of um, of an eyesight. They when I once had a colony inside a test tube, living inside a test tube inside of a plastic basin, and if I wa they were at about um, belt level, at about leg end of the leg level in a shelf, and if I, I walked by, all of the workers in the outworld would just stop, put their gasters, their abdomen. Um, under their their bodies, as they would shoot me, they would try. As sometimes they would shoot me with formic acid, or try to because they don't squirt it that hard. Um, and they just they would just look at me, turn their heads as I walked by because they're they're very attentive, attentive. And also, I find that the queen is also very bold, and they always do the, this defense position. But they can't. Re I don't. I don't think they can. They can at all squirt their formic acid they just they create a drop and if they bite you with their mandibles they're big they can probably cut your skin a little they'll then put a drop in and if you get formic acid in a, an open flesh wound man that hurts a lot but you know it takes the time for them to actually open the wound in you to then place the formic acid in you so it's okay don't worry about it just 
they're very active. So pay attention to that when you're working inside their, their alt world. Also, the the colony can get to some absurd numbers as the um, as they can be polygynous and very polygynous at that because they can have a very great number of queens. I don't think there's actually something like a limit to this. I've I've seen like colonies of ten queens, something stupid like that, and they can get into the tens of thousands easily. They can probably get into the thousands with one queen. So with ten, it's just Truly, and it would be for me truly mesmerizing to actually own a very nice, very big colony of these, uh, which I don't currently, but I have in the past. Now, um, you have to pay attention to one thing with these ants: is that they want a large space. They always want a large space. They'll they'll use vertical and horizontal spaces as you give them it's it's very fun to watch them move around to watch them do their thing and it's very fun if they start building if they start building it's the best thing that ever that has ever happened in your hobby because it's truly amazing what they can build now um one important thing is that they um they need to be fed constantly they are a very active species of ant and they don't hibernate because they're tropical and their their development from egg to adult worker is actually pretty fast for a such a big ant so they need to keep constantly eating and constantly taking in protein so that they can develop keep that in mind give them a lot of water a lot of sweets and a lot of protein i don't really find they love um, fruits that much but you can try every colony is a colony just give them a, var a varied a varied 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 diet and keep it keep it as I've told you just do what I've said and you'll do fine okay this is all I've got in Polyarchist Dives and um, if you if you need any further help if you have any questions or anything to add at all to this video just leave a comment down below. Uh, if you liked it, leave a like. And please consider sharing this with your friends as I really want my channel to grow. I really want to share the ant love with everyone I, I can get to. And I really, really, really want to share the hobby that I am most interested in. Which is animals. It's not just ants, it's animals. But ants are really a passion for me. So, share it. I don't know, put put your phone in front of your dog and let him watch me. I, I bet he'll like me. My dog likes me. Sometimes. Okay, that's it, guys. I hope you had fun. I hope you liked it. Bye-bye.